Hello, this is Mr. Montgomery. This is for my Physics 1 lab students um, that are at home for one reason or another, weren't able to be in lab to do this experiment. But this experiment's all about measuring acceleration due to gravity and using an inclined plane to do that. So if you haven't done it already, go ahead, print out your lab handout so you'll have all the data tables you need as we're going through this experiment, you'll be able to record everything. All right, but get that printed out. Go ahead and read through the first page, through the introduction, through the procedure and objectives. Um, I'm gonna show you in just a moment all the materials and setup, uh, but it's gonna be similar to what's up here on the board behind me. That we're gonna be taking this ramp, setting it some different heights, put a card on top of that ramp, let it go, measure that cart's acceleration as it approaches the bottom of the ramp. We're gonna test that at five different heights, and at each height, we're gonna do three different trials so that you can get an average acceleration. Now, one of the things you're gonna be calculating, I'm gonna measure off those heights for you. I'm gonna tell you the acceleration. You're gonna to need to calculate the sine of theta. You're not calculating theta itself, just the sine of theta. So you're gonna take that height that we do in the experiment, you're gonna divide it by the length of the ramp. Well, in every case, the ramp is 122 centimeters long. We're looking at this triangle that's being formed here with the table top, and that's the angle we're talking about. But you're calculating sine of that angle. When everything's said and done, as part of your analysis on your lab report, as part of answering your questions, you're gonna produce a graph. That graph's gonna be the average acceleration versus the sine of theta. And again, that's why it's important. You're not solving for actual theta. You want the sine of theta. Just whatever this decimal place ends up being over here when you divide H over L. What you wanna do with that graph then is get it plotted out find the slope of that graph, find the slope of that trend line, and you're gonna use that trend line when you're answering some of your questions. So let me get over here and I will show you all the materials that we're gonna use. Got all my materials laid out on the table. So what we're gonna be using, we have this track right here that we're gonna be sloping at an incline. Got my meter stick I'm gonna to use to measure the height of that track. Um, I've got a magnetic stop right here that's going to stop my car when it's coming down the track so that it doesn't fall off the end. But just magnetic here, magnetic repulsion, going to cause it to slow down a little bit at the end. I've got a special little clamp here that's going to connect to the side of my track. That's going to connect to my ring stand so that we'll be able to adjust the height easily. Got this motion encoder made by Vernier. This is going to work with our little car. Our car has a little sensor on the bottom and this sensor tracks as it moves over this track. It measures these little black and white stripes to know how far it's traveled. Knowing that distance and the time, then we're gonna be able to get the velocity and use that to get the acceleration as that velocity changes. And then lastly, this is the LabQuest 3 from Vernier. This is the brain of the operation, the computer that's gonna be gathering all of that data. And we're gonna use this in order to interpret that data and calculate that acceleration. So let me get everything put back together and we'll get started. So I've got everything set up and put together. My ramp over here, when I set it up, when I measure this height, this is right on 5.0 centimeters. So that's gonna be the first height for our first three trials. My lab quest is ready. My car is turned on and powered on. So what I do is I hold my car up here at the top. I'm gonna to reach over and start the data collection on my lab quest. I'm gonna let this car go. It's gonna fall off the track. The lab quest stops itself after five seconds, half past five. So now we want to be able to analyze this data right here. So I'm going to try to bring this a little closer up here to my screen. I'm sorry if it catch a glare, but you see this part right here where you get a nice incline, you get a sudden crash and then the car stopped moving. We want to study this part of the graph over here. So I'm just going to highlight a nice portion of that incline and we want to find the slope. The reason we want to find a slope 
is this is a velocity versus time graph. So the slope of this graph is the change in velocity divided by change in time, which is our acceleration. All this is in the instructions in your handout, but I'm going to analyze. I'm going to go to curve, fit. I'm studying the velocity graph. And I've got a linear fit equation already selected. That's one thing about this new LabQuest 3. It does it already. But what we're looking for is this slope. Okay, that slope, 0 0.38357, that is the acceleration for trial number one at five centimeters. All right, we want to do that same thing two more times. But again, 0 0.38357. 357, it's our first acceleration. So I'm gonna set this down and we'll prop that up so we can see it a little bit at least. And I'm going to start this data collection all over again. Let the car go, crash. I'm gonna let it stop itself there. And I wanna do the same thing. I'm going to highlight my data, analyze, curve fit, velocity, this time, try to get it in there clear for you. Slope 0 0.38328. 0 0.38328. That was trial number two. Now we're gonna do trial number three. And then after that, we'll adjust the height. So let me, I see one thing here I'm gonna fix real quick is I only wanna see graph number two, not graph number one. I'm not worried about the position graph. All right, let it go. Velocity increases, crashes, let it stop itself. So one more time here for a height of five centimeters. Highlight, analyze, curve fit, velocity. This time slope 0 0.3797. 0 0.3797. All right, so you got three trials for five centimeters, take the average of those. I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna change our height. All right, so height number two, I've adjusted this now to give me exactly 10.0 centimeters. We're gonna bring our car back to the top of our ramp, straighten things out a little bit here, start my collection, let it go, crashes. You see a little bounce that time, you see a little rebound. That's what this spike, this negative spike is, the car returning back up the ramp a little bit. But again, we're focused on this acceleration that was occurring as the car went down the ramp. So I'm highlighting curve fit, velocity. This time we got a slope of 0 0.773, yeah, 0 0.77034. 0 0.7703. Four. A little bit larger acceleration because the ramp's a little bit steeper. So that was trial number one. Let's do this same thing again. Trial number two. Crash, bounce. Highlight. Analyze, curve fit, velocity. This time slope is 0.77. 508. 0.77508. That was trial number two. One more test at a height of 10 centimeters. Start it up. Let it go. Crash. It bounced way back that time. It's got a double bounce. Okay. And but what's interesting here is if we took the time, these two lines have the same slope. Good. We're just going to look at the first one. Analyze, curve fit, velocity, slope 0 0.77172. 0 0.77172. All right, let me stop there and I'm going to get a new height set up for us. Now we're on our third height. This time I set us up 15.0 centimeters. So bring the car to the top of the ramp. <clears throat> Excuse me. Start collection, let it go. Crashes. And again, we want to look at this slope. Analyze, curve fit, velocity. 
This time, slope's 1.1594, 1.1594. So you notice that same pattern. Our ramp's a little bit higher, our slope's a little bit steeper, so our acceleration increased again. All right, so this is trial two at 15 centimeters. Get started, let it crash, slams to a stop. I bring it up here. Gonna highlight my information. This time, slope M, 1.1626. 1.1626, that was trial number two. Let's do one more set at a height of 15 centimeters. Get it going there. All right, so this is trial three. This time slope is 1.167, 1.167. All right, let me pause here. Now we're on height number four out of five. This one I've set up at 20.0 centimeters, 20.0. So I reach over, start my collection, let it go. It's gonna crash, it's gonna rebound. Again, like earlier, you see those two portions here with the same slope. We're gonna focus on the first one. Gonna analyze curve fit velocity like we've been doing. And this slope 1.5848, 1.5848. All right, that was trial one, height number four. Let's get the next one. There you go. Crash. Stop. Highlight. Curve fit. Velocity. Slope 1.5752. 1.5752. All right, one more for height number four. Rebound would have rebounded again if I would let it go. All right, so let me highlight. You'll notice I've not been highlighting the very beginning and very top here, just because that's where you'd probably get a little bit of error. I just want it, you know, when it's in the middle of the ramp going down. And so let's analyze that again. Curve fit, velocity, get a slope, 1.5696, 1.5696. All right, so let me pause there and we'll set up our fifth and final height. Final height, set this one up, we're right at 25.0 centimeters. So we're gonna start test number one. All right, it's gonna crash. We're going to take a look at this data. Oop, just about lost it there. All right. 1.9923, 1 1.9923. Bring that back up here to the top. Start it up, crash. Gonna analyze this data. Curve fit, velocity. Slope now 1.978, 1 1.978. Ah, and then one final run here. Let it go. Crashes. All right. Going to highlight this data. Analyze curve fit velocity. And one last time. One point. 9988. 1.9988. So that does it for this physics one lab experiment about determining acceleration due to gravity on an inclined plane. Uh, you've got all the data you need now to do your lab report. Uh, but like I said earlier, main thing you're doing, calculating those average accelerations so that you can plot that graph of average acceleration versus the sine of theta. Use that trend line, calculate that slope, your computer's gonna do that for you. 
but you want to compare that slope to the acceleration due to gravity, which here on Earth is taking to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So, hope you had a good time, hope you enjoyed this, hope it all made sense mostly. Um, my students, again, if you need any help, feel free to contact me. I'm glad to help you out. Y'all have a good day.